Have you ever heard of aerogel? Well, if not, this video is gonna teach you exactly what it is and just how a company called Big Lou has used that material to innovate a new type of sleeping bag. In the intro I mentioned Big Lou. Now they're a company I think you're going to be very interested in because they've developed a new type of sleeping bag and quilt using aerogel. Yes, aerogel, a space technology and it's used by NASA in so many applications. So what actually is aerogel? Being invented in the 1930s and then further developed by NASA, it's basically a dehydrated gel composed of silica, carbon and in some circumstances up to 99% air. Now this incredible material being so rich in air and so lightweight makes it extremely insulative. One square meter of this product can be up to 50 grams which is incredibly light, that's insane and it provides protection down to negative 40 degrees at only one millimeter thick. So you can exactly understand why Big Lou have chosen this product to work with. And it makes aerogel not only one of the most insulating materials on earth, but also one really hard to find for commercial products. And that's why I was so interested when Big Lou got in contact with me. And this extremely low weight and porous material can even be found in applications such as the Mars rover or spacesuits, which makes it even more impressive to me. Basically, the sleeping bag is a mini spacesuit, and I think that's just awesome. Now, Big Lou is the world's first case in using this product for commercial sleeping bags and quilts. And hopefully it's looking to solve the problem of environmental impact when you're out camping or even just living in colder climates. So I've kindly been sent one of these prototype bags to test and they're actually going out on a Kickstarter this week. So I'll be putting it through its paces in a few tests, one in the garden just to test the temperature when it was extremely cold outside and then on this very camp I'm just going to be including some footage of the overnight section. The rest of the camp is going to be in another video so definitely go check that out on the channel if you do enjoy this video and thanks for joining on this one but I'm just going to be putting it through its paces we'll see if we can do a bit more of an in-depth test when it gets a bit colder if it gets a bit colder or if I have the ability to do it in any snow but without further ado let's get into it and I mean literally one thing I have to say about the bag is when it came it was extremely large I was thinking oh my god how am I going to pack this thing down and it didn't come with a compression sack but after speaking to Big Lou, they have confirmed with me that they are going to be releasing the bag with a compression sack. So in that regards, I was pretty happy. I did buy a large one from Amazon, cost me about £10. And I did compress it down and it packed down incredibly small. So that is really, really good. I was quite concerned because it was a very big box and I thought, how am I going to get that into my kit? But when it's packed down, it's not too far off the size of my Corinthia Defence 4 sleeping bag. And in terms of weight, the Corinthia Defence sleeping bag is just over two kilos and the Big Lou bag actually weighs 1.81 kilos so for a bag that goes down 15 to 20 degrees lower it's absolutely insanely lightweight so it has a comfort rating of minus 15 then a further rating of minus 40 with an extreme of minus 50 so you can really push it so it's going to come in two sizes so they are 198 centimeters and 213 centimeters long so if you're a bit taller you probably want to go for the longer one so there's going to be a lot of people who also say why haven't they used down, they could have made it a lot lighter, packed down smaller, and I do understand that, although down is awful when it gets wet. If you're using this on prolonged trips, or out in the snow, or in cold environments where there is going to be dampness, you do not want down, I'm sorry, you just don't want down. And the material is Dewpoint Serona, which is a synthetic fibre, and it's an alternative to down, so really, really good insulator. And it does pack down really small, like I said. It doesn't go as small as down, so it's a little bit bulky. So maybe not ideal if you're doing ultra, ultra light backpacking, and it's not going to be ultra cold. But this is designed for kind of Arctic environments. The shell is made of 20D40 OT, which is an ultra fine nylon, and it's got an incredibly smooth kind of finish to it. So the shell is also waterproof and windproof which makes it ideal for those colder temperatures and those colder climates, often they're twinned. So that really makes for a great bag on paper, but we'll have to test that obviously. Fit and size, I have been in it. It's 
quite broad on the shoulders. For me, at least, it fits quite well. If you're a bit bigger, you might have to go for the larger bag. And again, lengthwise, I still had plenty of room down by my feet. I'm about six foot. I had a good few inches down there. So definitely plenty of room and I could pull the hood right over my head. So I'm not too concerned. And obviously a bag is a fitting kind of thing. You don't just expect to buy one bag off the shelf and it fits every sort of person. There's gonna be different sizes. These guys are gonna be doing a regular and a large. So hopefully the large will work if the regular doesn't. Now I have seen a few people kind of complain about this bag saying it's huge, it's gonna be useless, no point. Um, compared to other bags of its size and I don't really see that actually because once it's compressed down it's perfectly fine it's just about getting a good compression sack at the end of the day a lot of that size is from the loft of the material so if you compress that down it's fine so I don't really see that as being a very fair argument the weight is 200 grams lighter than my Corinthia Defense 4 sleeping bag, which is an absolutely top spec sleeping bag. It's used by the military all over the world. So coming in at 1.8 kilograms, I think you're just moaning if you're saying it's a bit too heavy. And I really do think this is a good innovation. I'm excited to check it out. I'm just gonna be fair. And to be honest, I'm never really gonna be experiencing minus 40. And if I was gonna be doing that on a regular occurrence, maybe even this bag might need a bit of an upgrade as well. So there you have it guys. The temperature on the floor is minus 15 degrees centigrade. Let's get in the bag. Got this mat here from Thornhill Ultra Heavy, just so I can stand on without getting my feet wet. And I do have a pillow here. I'm gonna spin the bag around. So a tiny bit of lift off the ground. I'm gonna strip down into my long johns. It's definitely cold in here, but we've got a good bit of time. So let's see how I feel in five or 10 minutes. So obviously one thing about the setup that I have is I don't have a sleeping mat. So there's gonna be an incredible sap of heat from the ground. But funnily enough, I'm not actually feeling it at the moment. Not really feeling any cold spots in the bottom or in the back area of myself so um, we'll see how that keeps going but obviously you would use this with a sleeping mat I just wanted to give it a real proper test so about five minutes or ten minutes in and not really feeling cold at all there's Still, where I'm not stretched out, if I touch the bag, it's chilly to the touch, but it's, um, I'm really toasty warm, actually. So I'm gonna do a little temperature check in a second of a difference from inside the bag to outside. So we'll do the external temperature of the bag, and we'll do an internal temperature of the bag, just so we can see what the difference is. So we have a negative temperature of minus nine out here. And inside, on the inside of the bag is 23.9 degrees. So a considerable warmth difference. So again, if I do the underside of the bag, the underside of the bag is minus 5.2, which is probably more relative to the actual temperature out here. I'm gonna stay in it for another 10 minutes and see if I feel any more chills, but so far, so good. The outside of the bag is minus 6.3 degrees centigrade. Now I've tried to keep most of the warmth trapped in this bag, but there's gonna be some leaking out, so I'll do it quickly. So the inside of the bag on the lining, and that's on the edge, is a plus 23.6. So that's a considerable difference. And again, testament to just how good this bag keeps you insulated. Now obviously this has just been a really quick test, so let's get on to something a bit more in depth. So the bottom of the bag is wet, but it hasn't traveled through to the inside at all. 
completely dry on the inside and this material is kind of just laying on the top slash semi absorbing into it but longevity in the damp I don't know how it would handle so we'll have to see how that goes but it's definitely dry on the inside so if that's any indication to go by it definitely hasn't made it through and I can definitely feel that there's a much thicker layer of and I presume that's the aerogel under there so all good so far so there's the reverse of the area that I just showed you and you can see no dampness at all coming through and you have to take my word for it when I say it's bone dry and actually quite warm I can feel if I leave my hand there the warmth actually radiating back up and my hand actually starts to not warm up but I can definitely feel it internal thermometer is actually on 18 degrees and that's just after I've brought it inside beautiful woodland loads of hornbeam oak and beech around it's quite cold it's a chilly one it's probably about zero degrees at the moment it was minus five last night minus six probably and tonight I think it's dropping to about minus three, minus four. So the main reason I'm out here is to test a bag. Now the bag is absolutely massive. And you can see there in its compression sack, this is one that I've bought myself, but I'm sure it will come with one. In fact, they have let me know that it will. It was just these prototypes didn't. So it takes up most of my pack. But that's not an issue, especially if you were relying on this for warmth in much colder environments. So it's about almost one degree at the moment. So definitely getting cold. And that's why it's a good night to test this big loose sleeping bag. Obviously it's nothing near where the temperature is rated for. You can see it already starting to loft out in that bag. It's really springy and this outside material is incredibly tough and flexible i don't know how to explain it it feels almost like a pvc or tpu um, it's insane it's really really good quality and that's probably why it's so waterproof this is a large compression sack by the company red camp i just got this on amazon and it's about 50 liters i believe and it's more than ample enough for this bag. So you can see the nice yellow liner inside and it's really silky and soft. And inside it even has a little thermometer system. At the moment it's not registering because it's a bit colder, but if I hold my finger there for a second, it should start to at least pick up on 16 degrees. So you can see it here now on the sleeping pad and it's got this really big hood mummy kind of design. And it's gonna definitely be very comfortable. Just to keep some warmth in there, I'm just gonna close that off. I've just got a jumper under there as a pillow, but I have got another little travel pillow which I'll inflate a little bit later. That's the big loo all out now. Like I said, it's gonna to drop to probably about minus two, minus three tonight, maybe even colder. It has been about minus six or minus seven. So if we're lucky, it does drop and I can give this bag a good test. I'll still probably be extremely warm because it's rated down to minus 40, but it is waterproof as well. The only reason I'm not directly on the ground is just because then I really would be pushing my luck because if you were on snow, for example, you probably wouldn't compress it that much. Um, you'd still probably want something under there, just a thin foam mat because you lose most of your heat through your back when it's in contact with the ground. So that's the main reason, and I do want to just allow this bag to give me some kind of comfort. I don't want my back to be freezing and the rest of me to be warm. The zip opens from this top shoulder area and goes all the way down to the foot and then across. So it opens like so. Which is really, really nice for getting in and out of. You can just quickly take off your boots, get into it, throw this over and zip it up. And of course, if you're too warm, you can just open it up. And I have a feeling I might still be too warm. So it is in fact time to get into the sleeping bag. So I'm just in my long johns and my shirt at the moment, but I'll probably end up taking that off in a few minutes. 
and there we are. So comfort wise, I mean it is extremely soft on the inside, so silky and smooth. And I am a bit chilly at the moment, although I've just got into a sleeping bag that's been laying here for the last few hours. So that's bound to be the case. But I'll leave it, let myself warm this space up. I'm gonna shut the zip off and get a good night's sleep. Like I said, it's about minus five or minus six at the moment. And yeah, it's not gonna be the ultimate test for this because it's meant for minus 40. It's gonna give me and you guys a little bit of an indication. So uh, yeah, I will catch up with you guys in the morning to let you know how I do, see if I survive. <laughs> Should be perfect. Even now, I'm starting to warm up. I'm not feeling cold now. Um, it was just, I wasn't cold, it was just chilly. And um, one thing I will say is the air in this, this thing really <laughs> retains the air. Like when you push down, it kind of balloons up in somewhere else because it's really good and windproof. And this material is uh, really good and thick. It just stops the need for a bivy bag. So, um, it's a big win for me in that respect. Seems really, really well made. Anyway, good night guys. I'll see you in the morning. So good morning guys. Slept really, really well. Um, cool. It's definitely cold outside of the bag. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, really, really chilly out here, but inside the bag, I'm so warm. I was really warm all night as well. We got a little bit of rain this morning, just a few little drops. So um, yeah, it's uh, nice to be under this tarp. I didn't get wet at all. <sighs> so there you have it, the Big Lou Aero Gel sleeping bag. I'm really, really impressed. Obviously I haven't been able to use it in temperatures of minus 40, so I can't tell you how it does hold up in those temperatures. What I can tell you, is I had an extremely comfortable night's sleep and it has been about minus five or minus six and I was roasting it you know outside I kind of did forget how chilly it was when you're in there you kind of think oh it's just oh your little microclimate is great it really kept me warm windproof didn't feel a breeze through it at all so definitely go check them out if you're into this kind of bag and uh, yeah thank you so much Big Lou thank you to you guys for joining me and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. And definitely if you want to see the camp video from where I tested this bag, you can see it on my channel. Until then, stay safe and I'll see you soon guys.